What is up everybody, Sysadmin Sean here with another Proxmox tutorial video. Super quick one today, it's just about backups. So, as you may or may not know, when you deploy Proxmox on a host, you get access to backups by default. You don't need to deploy any other features or things like that. Backups can be taken at a host level. Now, I'm doing backups at a cluster level, so let's go to that. So we go to the cluster, and we go to backup, and as you can see, I have a backup job. Really easy to make a backup job. You go to add, you select your node. In this case, since I'm doing all, I'm doing a cluster level, all. Storage, this has to be storage that is marked for backups. So let me show you that just real quick. If we go over to storage, you can see that ISO, which is a CephFS, is marked for VZ dump backup files, and local is marked for VZ dump backup files. I'm gonna be using ISO, even though I really shouldn't, I should have another storage pool just for backups, but for this, it's fine. So we go back here, we go here, we go add, we got that schedule. You can set some pre predefined schedules. I do every day at nine o'clock. Some people might wanna do 2.30 in the morning and 10.30 at night. Um, just whatever feels right to you. Every 15 minutes, some people do that, especially if you're backing up things like file servers. I'm just backing up some containers and a a busted VM, so we're just gonna leave it like it is. Um, selection mode, all. So that'll do everything. I can do exclude. So, you know, exclude select VMs, don't back up these two, or, you know, pool-based. I could say, hey, um, back up this entire pool. I don't really have a pool, so we're gonna do all. And the schedule's gonna be, I don't know, every two hours. Notification, leave that alone, send email. I usually do on failure. I don't really need to know that they finished backing up. You can put in your email address here, uh, and then you can put in the type of compression you want. This is the fast and good. And uh, and then we should be able to just hit create. Uh, actually, we don't want to hit create yet. Retention. This is where you decide how long you want to keep your backups. Maybe you just want to keep one. That works great. This is to where you can dictate how Notes are added to the backup to say that, hey, a backup was taken for a certain um, container or virtual machine. I'm not really doing anything like that right now. So we hit create and there we go. We have a new backup schedule that will keep one backup and it takes every two hours. But if we wanna go ahead and take one, we can see, we just hit run now. And it's gonna cycle through all of this and you'll see some of these VMs are getting snapshots taken basically. That means we can't make any major changes to the virtual machine while the backup is being taken. And since these are initial backups, they're a little bit bigger in size, but they're also containers, so they're pretty small. <clears throat> All right, so now our backups are done and we did get a warning. Let's double check and see what this is. So you can just double click on that and it will bring up what it did. And if you scroll through here, we should see a warning symbol. There it is. No EFI disk configured using temporary EFI. EFI VARS disk, and that was for the uh, da, 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 one of the backups. It looks like it was this one, the Windows 2022 test box. So anyway, now we have our backups. We can go to our storage, and we can see that we have backups here. So and then you can go to Show Configuration to see uh, the virtual machine and all of its uh, hardware configuration stuff in case you need it. You can even click Restore and just paste it on there as a new VM, or I believe, yeah, look at this, unique, start after a store. I wonder if we could blow away 104 and just pop it back in. Let's see what happens. Stop, all right, there's our VM off, or well, our container, remove, we're not going to purge it from job configurations. We're not going to destroy any unreferenced disks yet, just because I don't really know if that's safe. <laughs> so my first restore, you're, you're going there with us. So let's hit restore. 104, not unique, from backup, start after restore. And yeah, VM data. A restore. And now we can see it's starting up. the backup, the restoration procedure. Now, one thing you might notice from this is that 
we have to do a full restore. Now, this is a tiny little virtual machine container. So doing the whole system is exactly what I would want to do anyway. Nothing about this is, is that critical that I just need to do single file level restores. I just need to have a restoration point, basically. And it is finished. We can close this. And it is on. And let's see if it's on on. It's on on. And then if we go to, so let's double check via the IP address. 30.6. And there it is. Turnkey OTRS is on. We restored the system. Now let's take a look at this VM one. Can I do any sort of, nope. So this is where Proxmox backup server would come into play. We could do file level restores. It can dig into the backups and things like that. But for right now, we don't really need all that feature set, but I will build a, 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 a document later to, or a, a video later to show how that works. So, but that's it for this one. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next.